Hello, coming to you from St. Martin de Porres. I want to begin by apologizing for how the past two Fridays I haven't been able to upload my usual scripture meditations on the readings for the upcoming Sundays. And the two Sundays in question that I didn't do them for are Holy Family Sunday and uh, this most recent Sunday, Epiphany Sunday. So I want to begin by apologizing for that. The reason is because Christmas Day and January 1st, the Feast of Mary, the Mother of God, were very busy days and they happened to land on a Friday when I would normally videotape those um, those recordings. So I just want to apologize for that. But in view of that, I want to dedicate this podcast and Wednesday's podcast to uh, some themes present in the Feast of the Holy Family and the Epiphany, so as to somewhat make up for the fact that I wasn't able to give you a, a meditation on those feasts um, for the past two Fridays. So this uh, today we'll cover uh, the Feast of the Holy Family from two Sundays ago, and I want to take um, uh, take this meditation from an excerpt from Pope Paul VI. It was read during the Office of Readings on the Feast Day of the Holy Family. And there are three meditations in here that I think will be worthwhile, or three points in his meditation here that I think will be worthwhile. So I won't read um, this excerpt from Pope Paul VI. I'll just paraphrase and glean from it these key points, okay? So... Pope Paul VI, or Pope St. Paul VI, uh, looked to uh, the Holy Family as the school of Nazareth. He looked at them as the image and the exemplar of any family. And he longed to be able to journey back to his own childhood and relive his childhood through the lens of the spirituality of the Holy Family. And for him, the, spiritual, the spirituality of the Holy Family is threefold. And these are the three uh, meditative uh, points for today. The first is that the Holy Family was contemplative. There was an atmosphere of silence, not from day to day, but rather the fact that we do not know what happened while Jesus was in Nazareth invites us to enter into a space of silence, an absence of knowing anything about his infancy, apart from those few things mentioned in Matthew's and Luke's gospel, Everything else is covered with silence, even though many things were happening. So it's appropriate then that we take the attitude of Mary, who, according to Luke's gospel, observed all these things and meditated upon them in her heart. So although most of those things are not recorded that she observed and meditated, the Holy Family stands as an invitation to us to sit in silence before the Christ child and meditate on those things that we do know of him in our heart. And also to kind of expand, if I may, on what Paul VI was saying, we can look at our own history, our own childhood, our own adolescence, and see where the presence of God was. Because there's no question that God was present. And in fact, he was there the whole time. But there are moments where we might see him more clearly. And so if I can expand Paul VI's invitation here to see the Holy Family as contemplative, I think it might be appropriate to say that we should apply it to our own upbringing. We should observe or rather reflect 
on what happened in our, in our life and meditate upon it in our hearts, even as Mary did in relation to the Christ child. Okay, so in sum, the first point is that the Holy Family was actively engaged in life, but because we lack knowledge of everything that happened, it's an invitation to sit in silence and ponder the things that we do know of from their life and also from our life and see where the Christ child was present in each, both in the Holy Family and in our family. The second point is that the Holy Family is the exemplar of family life. See, Pope Paul VI emphasized in this part how the family is the basic foundation of society. It's the bedrock. And the love of uh, the beloved and the lover of husband and wife gives rise to new life. And it, God willing, sustains it, nurtures it, and allows it to flourish even beyond their nuclear family unit. The hope is that one day the children will go and raise their own family. And they will do so in imitation of what they saw in the household. Now, in the household of Nazareth, where Joseph is a righteous man, Mary is immaculately conceived, and the Christ child as God and man, obviously immaculate as well. It's the, it's the perfect family. There's no other way to describe it. It's simply the perfect family. But that doesn't mean it's in the clouds. As scripture says, the word is near you in your, it's in your heart, it's on your lips. That is to say that the Holy Family was in the knit and gritty, the knit and gritty of life. And so they, uh, they just took a different attitude towards reality than we do. We do so in good ways, but yet some things might be mixed in there that, are, that uh, might lead us astray. We are a mixed bag, if you will. But the Holy Family was just as involved in life as we are. It's just that their disposition towards what is good was clear. And they always acted it out. And in that respect, they act as the perfect exemplar of how we as members of a family can seek the good of each other, to seek, to seek the good of those outside our family, you know, that the family of God doesn't just include our own nuclear family unit. unit it's all expansing, all expansive. It's desires to embrace all the nations. So um, the important thing here is that we reflect upon this. And the other thing is that um, the third point, that is to say, that uh, Pope Paul VI gives us. By the way, that phone ringing in the background, that's, uh, that's the parish phone. I'll have to attend to that at the end of this uh, video. But in any event, um, the third point here that Pope Paul VI gives us is the role of work. That Joseph was uh, a craftsman or carpenter by trade, and Jesus would have learned the value of work by sitting at Joseph's uh, feet and uh, when he got old enough to actually help him in his trade. And so the important thing here is that Jesus learned the value of work. Work not just in the sense that it's done for its own sake, but work that can um, give us a certain meaning and purpose. And Mary herself, whatever she did in the home, because during that time, um, as we know, particularly in ancient cultures, women mainly um, attended to matters in the home. Mary would have done likewise. And um, 
Jesus would have learned the value of domestic work from his mother as well. So may we find, um, may we find meaning and value in these three points. May they nourish us. Medi- uh, may they nourish us and enable us to meditate in our hearts, just like Mary did, on the beauty of the Holy Family and how it is an exemplar for us. May you have a very peaceful day. May the intercession of the Holy Family be with you all. Peace.